Good morning. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Will Snyder. I'm a sales and charter broker with 26 North Yachts. We have a terrific webinar lined up today. We're going to be speaking with Sana Vora, who is the president of Worldwide Boat, a global leader in luxury crewed yacht charters. Sana joined Worldwide Boat in 2013 and is one of the big reasons that the company has become even more prominent in the charter industry over the last several years. One recent highlight for Worldwide Boat was the creation of the Bahamas Charter Show, which Sana spearheaded and which took place in February of this year. The Charter Show was a smashing success uh, by all accounts with nearly 20 yachts and 80 brokers participating. Uh, this event was extremely important for the Bahamas, particularly given that the country is still reeling from the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, and I should note that while the event could have been a great moneymaker for a worldwide boat, all proceeds, in fact, went to a local nonprofit. And so hats off to, to Worldwide Boat and Sauna. We're, we're thrilled that you're joining us this morning. Before turning things over to Mike Carlson, co-founder of 26 North Yachts, I do want to remind everyone that our first four webinars can be found on our YouTube channel. This one will be uploaded shortly, so please uh, check them all out. Also, I wanna encourage everyone to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen uh, to ask any questions that you might have during the course of this presentation. We're gonna spend the last 10 minutes of what is a 30 minute webinar answering as many of those questions as we possibly can. And so now that that's all out of the way, Mike, Sana, good morning. Good morning, Will, and good morning, Sana. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being here. Good morning, thanks for having me. So I think this is now our, our, our fourth webinar and we try to pick topics as Will mentioned that would be of interest to current boat owners or, or future boat owners as well as obviously in this case people considering charter. So um, a lot of the topics and questions that I go over or like to go over are questions that I, I receive from potential or existing boat owners. So to kind of get started being obviously charter focused uh, for the next 30 minutes here. I think there is a lot of interest and kind of curiosity as to what sort of the current state of the charter market is uh, is right now. Sure. Well, I think we can say that it came to a grinding halt when the rest of the world came to a stop as well. Um, I don't think that's a shock to anybody. But the good news is we're starting to pick back up um, over the last 10 days or so. We're starting to field quite a few inquiries, which is great news. Um, you know, I'll pose a question to you, Mike. What would be the first thing you'd want to do coming out of COVID? Yeah, it's a good question. It's something that I uh, I look at daily. It's like, yeah, it's like where where you know, it's like as this thing kind of eases out, is like where you know, is to change up your environment and go on a vacation. Right. It's, that's you know, exactly it. Found right now under this quarantine. Yeah, and that's exactly how clients are feeling. You know, we reached out to several of our clients um, as the COVID started to happen, and so many of them said, oh, how I wish I could be quarantined on a yacht. Um, so it certainly is the, the focus for a lot of people is to go out on vacation, and, and yacht charter is one that is going to be deemed to be one of the safest places to be, I think, after COVID, because you're not amongst the, the millions. You can be very private. Um, most charters actually end up spending a lot of time on the water instead of on land. So even though it did come to a halt, I, I would say currently we are, we're starting to kick, kick start again for future inquiries. We've gone to contract on some Thanksgiving charters and into the future. And there are some clients wanting to do summer charters as well. So I think we're on our way back up. So Sana, so right now, it, you know, and we've had some calls for this as well. If someone does, you know, if someone's looking to do a charter here in the very near future, what are their options right now, if any? A good question. Well, good news is um, Miami just opened up their marinas and waterways yesterday. So I would say Florida is the first place that's um, available to us. We just received news that the USVIs are also opening back up May 15th. So even though not right now, just a short two weeks away, which gives us enough time to pick a yacht and for them to provision and plan for a charter, um, the USVIs are open. Despite the BVIs being closed, many people think, well, where am I going to cruise? The St. Croix is offering some really beautiful cruising grounds and open to business as well. So um, that's where I would say will be our first few places to head. 
With my so talking about just specifically with Florida right now, so Miami waterways opening up in the marinas. I mean, I you know I see a lot of just small center councils out on the weekends. Is that specific to larger motor yachts, or how? Uh, what differences are there happening now with Miami specifically versus just a couple of weeks ago? Good question. So a couple of weeks ago, it was completely closed to everybody. Um, no no boats could leave the docks and the, the sandbars, everything was closed. I am not, I'm not exactly sure if there is a difference in, in law and rules uh, between small boats and larger yachts. Um, I, I wouldn't think so, but I know that they do have the social distancing measures in place. Uh, you have to be 50 feet or more apart from another boat, um, which I don't think is a problem, especially on a yacht since you are in deeper waters and mostly away from the center consoles anyways. Have you seen, so when do you foresee it's like the, the, the earliest someone could book a charter? What, what do you see that being? Um, out in Florida, it could be today. Um, but in, outside of it, I would say May 15th would probably be the first charter outside of here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like to your point earlier is that even for people that haven't considered chartering before, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity there just given like what you said. I mean, it's a very controlled environment much more so than going to a res you know a resort wherever you are and there's ways obviously to get there um privately or without you know public transportation or what have you but it's Absolutely. certainly you know i think too it's like even talking with with friends i mean there's there's price points in all different ranges and i think sometimes people think of yacht charters as being exclusively you know these hundred foot boats um, which is certainly plenty of availability for those, but there's also much smaller options as well that are, are maybe more appealing to different price ranges. In addition to bringing on friends or couples with, with their kids too. So it's, how, how often do you see boats having like joint family vacations on charters? No, you bring, you know, you bring up a good point. Um, there really is a variety of yachts and very often we see families go with other families and friends um, join up with other couples and you know people go in groups and in in yachting we have yachts that range from 50 foot catamarans all the way up to 300 feet nonetheless they still get to enjoy a very luxurious vacation um, here at worldwide boat we specialize in crew charters as will said so we really do have crude boats that will offer a lot to do for a family, even on a catamaran. They, they have chefs on board, they have um, complete staff and crew, as you would even on a larger boat. Yeah. Have you seen changes in crew? It's like how are existing owners dealing with their crews, whether they're letting them go or furloughing them or how, you know, crew is obviously, maybe you could talk some more about this crew's incredibly important to the success of a charter, almost more so than the boat itself. How do you think um, this whole pandemic impact the crew on these charter boats? Well, I've always said um, crew really make up 70% of your charter experience. And I know that's, a, that's quite a significant number, but believe it or not, that it, they really are um, the heart of your experience when on charter because the boats are beautiful, the islands are beautiful, um, the waters are pretty, but it's about, you know, the captain's knowledge and the, the chef on the on the boat and the crew, the type of food they're cooking based on your preference sheets, et cetera. So crew is an extremely important factor in this industry. Unfortunately, because of everything that's gone on, we have seen some boats furlough a few crew or, or let go or, or go down to a more minimal crew. But the good news is, majority of the charter yachts, especially because things are already starting to open and, and things are heading the more positive direction already, the more the busier charter yachts have kept their crew. Um, so I think that we, you know, they, even though we might have some new crew come in, a lot of the key players have been left in place, which is nice for charter clients that are looking for a yacht at this time. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's, you know, looking uh, with that being said, even for, for, for an owner now or for someone that's considering purchasing to go into charter, when would be a good time? I mean, just based on your own inquiries, and I think about it myself, the inquiries that we have for charter, and, you know, you and I, we work a lot together, is when is a good time to start really ramping up again and, and, and getting the boat set up for, 
for charter in regards to you know uh, in regards to getting the boat all crewed up and having everyone in place? You know, Mike, now is the time. Um, there isn't a better time to be honest because we are. I, I do believe as the world gets going again, charter is probably going to be one of the first things that bounce back, or at least I believe so. Um, if we could set, if, if a boat is looking to go into charter, now's the time to grab some of the great crew that may have been let go or furloughed. So it's a good time to take them on. Um, and, and soon after, as the inquiries start to come in, it's a good time for, for your manager to market the boat out to brokers into the brokerage community as fully crewed or ready to go. Um, because it, it's the key player, it's the key boats that are already set up for charter, have their crew in place, have their maintenance done, have their toys in place, and are ready to get going, are not in the middle of a yard period or um, in the middle of a project, that if a last minute inquiry comes in, they can get going to what, whatever destination it is. Because most boats at this time, I would say, are here in Florida. Um, so they do most likely have to get to either the Caribbean or Bahamas or New England. Yeah. And I know you deal with a lot of boats in the Bahamas. And as Will mentioned in the intro, you put on the, um, the, the charter show in the Bahamas. Are those boats still over there or have you had them come back to Fort Lauderdale? Some have stayed there. Um, majority of them have actually stayed there. Mm -hmm. So they're ready to go, but some have come back to Fort Lauderdale. Those that are based in the Bahamas year round, and that's where they call it home anyway, they have remained in place. Mm -hmm. What do you, um, so again, kind of talking about options right now. So you have Florida, which it sounds like is gonna be, you know, pretty much right, you know, right now. And then the Bahamas, you said, what, what's the anticipated date for the Bahamas reopening? You know, I had a call yesterday actually with the Ministry of Tourism and I was really hoping for that answer. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a date set in place. There are a few people that are lobbying for June 1st, mm -hmm. but they, they have rolled out a five-phase reopening plan, but it's very much based on their health ministry to guide the dates for that. So nothing has been published as to when that would happen. We remain optimistic, of course, that June 1st is the date because we've got so many clients eager to get back on the water. And as you know, the Exumas are, are truly paradise and a great change of environment from what everybody's experiencing currently. Yeah, and as, so, so as a reminder too, this, this forum is open to uh, Q&A too. So to take one question from Kimberly, she asks, are there measures being put in place for testing both the client and the crew right now for charter yachts? Well, it's a really good question and it's been the hot topic of our industry as you can imagine because safety, does come first not only for our clients but also for our crew and our owners as well as the yachts because they you know it they have been talking about several measures being put in place one of them being having 14 days between charters so that the crew can self quarantine there's been a lot of um cleaning that's that's going on now and companies that are providing disinfectant services between charters. Um, as for testing itself, I know yesterday I was on a call uh, with Bay Street Marina and they were actually talking about possibly setting up a testing site on site at the marina itself. So a lot of these things are currently in the works. Um, we, don't, we don't have it in concrete yet, but I do think a lot of this will go into effect with crew getting their own kits, um, testing clients prior to getting on board, you know, testing all the crew members periodically. So I do think this will be on the forefront of everybody's mind as we go through this. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no, I would think so. And then Sana too, do you think that, you know, with, um, I, I guess, could you talk about just with boats that would generally leave for the season, whether to New England or even the Med is, um, I mean, is that given there's gonna be more, I would think more availability here in South Florida to include the Bahamas, how is how is all of this impacted pricing, if at all? Well, you know, a lot of boats were already booked for charter prior to us going into this whole COVID situation. So some boats have, um, especially in the Mediterranean, since things are still up in the air as to opening, have rescheduled their charters into the future, which have made their calendars either fully open um, or they've changed their, their plans to either stay back in Florida and cruise the Bahamas or go to New England, which I think we will see 
quite a supply of yachts heading to New England. That being said, um, over the past 10 days, we really have seen an increased demand in clients wanting to charter again. So we aren't seeing prices being slashed by 50% or even 30% for that matter. I have, ha I have been successful in negotiating 10% off for a weekly charter, which usually weekly charters, you know, one week charter doesn't necessarily see a discount. Um, so we have, we, we are seeing a little bit of flexibility. What, what we are really seeing the flexibility in are the terms and conditions for cancellation. Mm -hmm. So quite a few yachts. And if anybody's interested in a list of what boats are offering this program, there are several boats worldwide that are offering free cancellation due to COVID. So what's nice is that you could take advantage of getting your dates or booking your charter now for when you would like to go and should COVID or travel restrictions be in place or should we see a second flare up of this virus, you will be able to cancel without any penalties. So that's where we are seeing more of the flexibility. Well, and as far as like the length or the duration of the charter, are you seeing changes there? You know, looking at like a normal term charter, can you just go yeah, through sort of what like the normal time period would be for a charter? Sure. Well, so we typically see seven nights. Um, that's a week long charter, seven nights, eight days. Mm -hmm. um, I have had several clients come to me recently, actually interesting, for a longer term charters. In fact, one is asking for a four to five week charter. I think that people are so homebound right now that all yeah. they can think of is getting away and getting away for a really long time. Uh, you know, for myself, I think about COVID really made me think and, and realize the importance of time with family and time with those that you care and love and, and taking some time away from, from work. Um, and I think a lot of people have that on their mind. So thinking about a charter, again, think about an extended vacation. It's on the mind of a lot of people. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, can you talk to, so Sana, just like even, for someone that doesn't have experience with dealing with like a charter broker like yourself is like what kind of services do you provide and what you know just your background or your favorite cruising grounds um can you just kind of yeah shed a little light on that as well sure yeah it would be my pleasure so i've been a yacht charter broker going on 14 years now and we are we are similar to real estate brokers where we really help the clients get matched up with the boat and the crew that would be best suited for them and their family. So what's really important for me as a broker is to learn your family um, that's going on charter or your group that's going on charter. You know, if you're active, if you're looking more for a relaxed vacation, are you more of a foodie and is, 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 are there certain dietary requirements that I could match you up with the chef? So as I mentioned earlier, I truly believe that crew are 70% of your experience. So we spend the time going from boat shows to boat shows or open houses, meeting crew, inspecting yachts, because sometimes, you know, on, on photos, they may not do the yacht justice versus going on board, seeing the boat, touching, feeling, smelling, seeing is very different. Um, so we help match our clients up with the boat as well as matching up a client to the right destination. You know, we have so many destinations worldwide that we can offer charter to. And there are some clients that want to go to the Mediterranean, but they say, hey, I've got the kids with me. I'm not sure where I want to go. You know, Ibiza sounds great, but that's more of a party destination. So we help match them up with the destination or set their itinerary, put their itinerary in place. Prior to the charter, there's also a lot of legwork that goes in from planning the, the, the preference sheets and the menus or the itineraries. Milestone celebrations are huge on charter from birthdays to anniversaries. Um, we've even had actually planned a few proposals where we've made custom shirts and, and flew in the, the parents as a surprise. So there's a lot, you can really get intricate with the details on what there, how much there is to offer on charter. So a broker is really there to be your guide and to guide you plan all of that from beginning to end. And even after the charter is over. I think too, is like what I've seen you help customers with is like planning, you know, even with just, yeah, as you mentioned with itineraries and taking in consideration weather and wind forecasting and where's, you know, where the best anchorages are going to be. And you have a lot of experience visiting all those locations yourself. So that's tremendously helpful. So you don't go out on a charter and you're ro rolling around all night and it 
turns out to be pretty unpleasant for uh, in that regard. Most definitely, most definitely. Weather is something that plays a big part um, in charter. As I say to most of my clients, flexibility is the name of the game when you're on the water and when you're on a yacht. Um, so the more you can be flexible with your travel plans, um, the more it helps you have an even better experience because you've got less expectations and enjoy what every day brings to you. Um, you had asked me, Mike, of my favorite destination, and I have to say it's the Exumas. I truly love the Exumas. I've been to the Maldives several times, and after going to the Maldives, I said, well, I cannot spend two days to get to my favorite location in the world. Um, shortly after, I actually did a trip on a yacht through the Exumas, and I, it, it was the closest I found to the Maldives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a great area. I've got another question here from Patty who's asking, do you think the already challenged Bahamas with a hurricane recover, recovery will be able to meet the yacht support needed to possibly, um, for possibly this heavy charter focus in the Bahamas? Which I, that's a, I think is a great question is given that there are a lot of boats here in the Bahamas is still recovering. You know, they're still going through a pretty rough time through this uh, from the previous hurricane. I, I, great question, Patty. I do think that the Bahamas are set up depending on where it where the location is. So the Exumas did not get affected at all, thank, thankfully, um, with Hurricane Dorian. They remained open for business and they had all of the structure in place. Of course, there were other areas that their sister islands that unfortunately got hit pretty hard, including the Abacos and Great Bahama. The Abacos were an up and coming and a very popular charter destination. They do have some time before they are up and running and ready to support the demand for charters. But the great thing about yachts, Mike, is that they're self-sufficient. And many boats that head over from, from Florida provision here before heading down there. Right. And those that are there, if they aren't able to provision directly from the, the suppliers in Nassau itself or in the Bahamas, we have, you know, sister companies or partners with different provision companies that can easily fly down any provisions needed. It's a short flight from here to the, to the Bahamas from Florida. Yeah, that's a good point. I think even just getting, you know, getting to the uh, location too, whether that's through like Watermaker Air or using them to bring uh, yeah, provisions or guests or, or what have you, that's another good option as well. Most definitely. Um, yeah, so again, just as a reminder, we're open for uh, for any other any other questions that uh, that come up. Um, I actually have a question for you, yeah. Mike. Are you seeing um, owners, yacht owners, currently listing their boats for sale actively, or do are they holding back because they feel like now's not the right time? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's a little bit of a mix. I don't think there's like a real you know, there's not a real definitive answer. Like everyone's kind of different. We are seeing new listings come up, uh, new boats for sale. I think the big, you know, a lot of a lot of people equate yacht sales or like our market to real estate, which is not entirely accurate, just given that yachts are always typically depreciating. So someone that wants to hold, you know, wait six months or a year, you have obviously the carrying costs that no matter what, that's not going to go away. You, you're still paying insurance, dockage, crew, even if it's limited. So you have that operating cost um, and then the depreciation in itself. So I think for people that are, that are holding out till the market changes, you know, I, I think too, it's like you have to, t the, re the reality is, is that for most larger yachts, the average listing time or the average sale time is close to a year. So it's like looking at all these factors from cost of ownership, depreciation, average time to sell. It doesn't, you know, really doesn't make a lot of sense to wait um, at this point, but you still have owners that are, are, that are waiting. I think for us from a sales standpoint, and even with charter inquiries, certainly in the last week and a half, um, we're getting a lot more inquiries for both buyers and sellers. Um, as well as charters are coming, you know, charter inquiries, and we work together for that. But um, but there definitely has been more activity here in the last uh, week and a half. And I, I think it's, I think really it's just like the cult, the American culture is people are just getting very antsy, and and it's like it's time to it's time to do something. And uh, right. you know, I, I know just for myself personally, it's and and a lot of other people I speak with, 
yeah, people just want to get out. The intercoastal, it's as busy as I've ever seen it with boats on the water. I've never seen so many boats on the weekend out on the water. So it's, it, you know, it's the one sort of outlet that you can do safely right now. Right. A great time. And I think that's even talking about with charter on your side, Sana, is like maybe even just talking about like what the experience is all about. You know, you obviously have the crew is being, you know, a huge part of that experience, but, but in the different types of way, as well as the toys and toys being like tenders, toe, toe behind tenders have become very popular in the past number of years. So you have a center council and you can go fishing. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. Beyond and that doesn't even the scratch the surface of, of toys, especially in today's day and age, you know, the, 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 the more toys, the better. Um, clients or with social media, there's so much exposure to all the different toys and things you could do on the water. So these boats have pretty extensive lists. I mean, some of them offer diving right on board. So if your family's into diving or want to get certified, you can choose a boat that offers diving or go rendezvous diving. Um, you know, jet skis are, are again, just a, a normal toy, but Beyond that, they've got jet levs, they've got um, slides that are coming down, they've got so many inflatables and, and beyond. So certainly, you know, I'll tell you one of the things most families tell me when they go on their first charter and return home, they say, well, you know what, Sana, we've done plenty of, of family vacations, but we've never spent so much time with our family. Mm. And the reason they say that is because your meals are had at the same time together. Most of the meals are a sit down experience at the table with your family, which in today's day and age, when everybody's go, 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 and everybody's on a different program or on their phones or have gadgets, um, which, which leads me to another point. Not a lot of people are using their gadgets when on a boat. You're, you're so disconnected and not that there is an internet, there is that you can hop online at certain places as long as there is availability for satellite, but there's a lot of the, of the, time that you're on the boat that you're not on the internet so you're not browsing through Facebook or Instagram etc or the kids aren't so they're actually speaking with you and having conversations if it is a rainy day well I don't want to get stuck on a boat on a rainy day oh I'd love to be stuck on a boat on a rainy day because that means a lot of, of of board games a lot of movie watching and crew get really creative you know they have fun theme nights so it wouldn't yeah, just be true. a regular old uh, movie night you know it's a movie night where everybody comes dressed in pajamas and the crew have got popcorn be popcorn being served and you know so much so it's really an experience from beginning to end and that's where a lot of families say son of being on a yacht has really shown us the 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 value of a family vacation because it's not hey mom i'm going downstairs to hop in the pool it's them jumping off the yacht and you're watching them or you're jumping in right behind them to join them yeah no that's uh yeah that's definitely the the, the the great part about it all. So Sana, Patty asking again, so are, are you seeing charter yacht owners now hesitate um, being the risk factor of guests traveling and boarding the boat for charter? No, I haven't really seen that to be honest. Um, you know, the question has come up just as it did on the other side, like how are we gonna take the measures to make sure that clients are in fact healthy and um, you know, not exposing the yacht or the crew, but they haven't been hesitant to accept a charter or take a charter for that matter. Um, they are in fact eager to still have, the, oh, this is a business for a lot of people. So they're eager to get going and, and, and welcome the clients and guests on board. Is there a, a particular boat or destination right now that you know is ready to go and would be a, a great option for someone that's looking at doing a charter? Like today, I would start with Florida, but if you're if you're willing to start planning today and get out on the water in a short two weeks, I would certainly consider the USVIs in St. Croix. We've got a great itinerary for that destination that we can share with anybody who's interested. Yeah, that's great. I think that's a good. Uh, this has been a, kind of a good recap on what's going on with the charter market, and glad to hear that uh, you know certain at least Florida right now, and and talking about some of the other places that are opening up. But I think it's yeah, it's definitely it's a great option for for owners to put their boats in charter as more inquiries start coming in now. And like what you said, and I think is very true, is that charter oftentimes is sort of the telltale or leading indicator even for yacht sales. So as we start getting more charter inquiries, it kind of gives us an idea that, you know, people are getting out and about and, and starting to want to uh, get outside their homes again, which is, which is great. And, and there's a lot of opportunity and availability out there right now, like more so, more so than ever.
Yes, I totally agree. I think it's we're on the up and up with, with uh, business again and with vacations again. And I hope we're a short ways away from everybody getting back on the water, enjoying their time together and not worrying so much about a virus that took over our world. Yeah. And so for anyone that is interested in placing their boat into charter or looking at considering doing a charter here in the near future, you can either contact myself, Mike Carlson at 26 North Yachts, or contact Sana as well. So feel free to reach out and uh, reach out to me and we'll connect you with Sana as we do a lot of work together and have a lot of mutual clients. So Sana's probably, uh, I think, the best charter broker in the industry. <laughs> knows all the locations and is a really, really good resource even for someone that's looking at purchasing to put their boat into charter to talk about how that can help offset some of the cost of ownership, especially in a time like now, which is, which I think is important. And a lot of owners are interested in, in doing, and it's a great way to, uh, to do it and, and still have the boat be very well taken care of as well. Thank you, Mike. That was very kind. Yeah. I'm happy to help in any way that I can from own owners wanting to put their boat into charter to offset those costs or clients wanting to head out on a vacation. Okay, well, kind of sticking to our uh, our 30 minutes here for the morning, we appreciate everyone uh, everyone watching and attending. And if there are any last minute uh, questions, we'd be happy to take them now. Otherwise, we'll we'll give it back to Will. All right. Well, I will. If anything pops up, great. Um, if not, we we look forward to seeing you all next time. And, and Sana, thank you so much. That was that was absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you. Bill. Next, uh, next webinar, we're going to be talking with Doug West, who's the president of Lauderdale Marine Center. Uh, LMC, as it's known, is a, a legendary shipyard and, in fact, the largest yacht repair facility in the United States. Uh, they have a lift that can accommodate yachts up to 485 tons. And if you've never seen it in action, it is truly breathtaking. Uh, the yard is, perhaps not that surprisingly, absolutely bustling right now. Uh, owners are taking advantage of the fact that that for the most part, they really, you know, have not been able to use their, their vessels for the past four to six weeks. And so they're getting those refoots and other, other projects done. So we can't wait to talk to Doug about that uh, because no doubt it's gonna be an interesting conversation. So next time will take place on Thursday at 10 a.m. And we look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you. Thanks everyone, we'll see you then. Thanks, Sana. You're welcome, take care and thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye now.